ninth annual Jared Cook Classic. Day two, it is the nightcap, and it is a 7A, 5A matchup. The 7A squad, the Wheeler Wildcats, they come in at one and one. The Cedar Shoals Jaguars, the 5A squad, they come in at one and oh. Cedar Shoals will be the visitor. Wheeler will be the home team. The starting lineup first for the visitors, Cedar Shoals. It'll be number one, Kavasi A. Ball. Number two, Lorante Jackson. Number four, Darren Applin. Number five, Giovanni McDavid. And number 15, Quincy Canty. For the Wheeler Wildcats, it'll be number 12, Jair, also known as Roscoe Eastman. Austin Johnson, number 22, Brandon Younger. Number 23, E.J. Montgomery. And number 30, Isaac Martin. I welcome in my partner, Sylvester. And Sylvester, you've seen this Wheeler squad. You asked me off air, what did I think about this Cedar Show squad? It's a retool Cedar Show squad, a 5A state runner-up last year. They had a problem with the team out of them Buford. <laughs> but other than that, I think they're a pretty good ball club. I like this Wheeler ball club. But historically, this is a matchup for Cedar Show that they need. Wheeler, they can't let little Cedar Shows get in the way, though. You know what, that is so, so, so true. Wheeler, the big time 7A program, has a coaching change. Anytime you replace a legend, a legend like in Coach Doug Lip, you know, you're gonna have maybe a little drop off, but not this year, not at all. They brought in Coach Larry Thompson, three time state championship winner over there with the Green Forest program. He is a coach, and I think he's the coach that they needed. Let me tell you something. I talked to Coach Thompson before the game. I said, you are a tough guy. You're going to bring toughness to this team. What did you do to the, in the offseason to get this toughness? He said, I kicked E.J. Montgomery out of practice twice before the season started, and everybody knew I was serious. And I'm pretty sure these guys believe Coach Thompson is serious. The Cedar Shows Jaguars will be all in orange, orange tops, orange bottoms, orange numbers with blue trim. Wheeler, white tops, white bottoms, gold numbers, navy trim. The Wheeler Wildcats out of Cobb County. The Cedar Shoals Jaguars out of Athens, Georgia. And the uniform police refs have been on it today. You know, I'm, I'm getting too old for these uh, same color numbers, man. <laughs> you. Canty and Montgomery jump it. Wheeler wins the tip, and here's Roscoe Eastman. And the Jags will fall back into a... 2-3 matchup. How about this? It's a feline fracas. Wildcats <laughs> and Jaguars. Montgomery in the middle. He spins it over to the right side to Younger. Long cross-court pass. Isaac Martin, a three. Good, Isaac Martin. Stretching the defense and cracks the seal with a deep three. That's what Isaac Martin brings to the table. He stretches the field. The field? Court, same thing. I'm still in football. There's a jumper right there going up. It is no good. That was Cavassier ball. Rebound comes down to E.J. Montgomery. E.J. puts the ball on the floor at the 6'10 side. Gives it over to Martin. Martin, a left-hander in the corner. There's Eastman, a three. No. Back iron. Canty tipped it. Ball is loose, and it comes down now to Younger. Younger going to pull the jumper. It's good. Brandon Younger quick out the gate. 5 nothing. Wheeler looking good. See, right now, Wheeler is just all size. They have the size and athletic ability right now. They have the size over Cedar Shoals, but Cedar Shoals has to negate that with their athletic ability. Canty holds it. Quincy Canty, a sophomore, played last season at Athens Christian and was the Region 8 Player of the Year, averaging over 21 a game. Shot is no good by Appling. Count to E.J. Montgomery. E.J. put it on the floor, flipped it up with the right hand and scores. E.J. Montgomery, and they race out to a 7-0 lead on the Jaguars right now. Eastman bothering ball from behind. Over in the corner, going to go baseline, kick it back. Canty, foul line jumper, good. Quincy Canty, his first field goal. Nice shot by Canty, that little mid-range game right around the free throw line. Isaac to Montgomery, Montgomery in the corner. There's a long three, front iron, no rebound, hit the floor, and McDavid is going to chase it away. Here comes McDavid, he's got Eastman on him. McDavid, layup, good. Jay Avani McDavid for a field goal. It's in transition off the defensive rebound. See, that's one thing. See the shows who wants to stay in this thing. They're going to have to outrun uh, Wheeler. Definitely so. Giving up too much size. Jags goes on. There's Younger. Younger down to Montgomery. Montgomery turning jumper. Good. E.J. Montgomery. If Montgomery's hitting that shot, it's going to be a long night. It will be. Cedar shows without Tyler Johnson. Tyler Johnson also played at Athens Christian last year. Pass knocked away. Here is Cavassier Ball. Ball a senior now. Has been around all three years. All he knows how to do is go to the semifinals, but he did it in role play duties. First year, going to be the starter now, at least for tonight. 
McDavid, wild out of control to Applin. Applin, a corner three, off the rim, no good. Rebound swallowed up by Isaac Martin, but he dribbled it off of his shoe, out of bounds. Larry Thompson, the head coach, you mentioned it, Sly. First season here at Wheeler. El Trico Thomas has brought this Cedar Shoals basketball program back to life on the east side of Athens, Georgia. And they made it to the state finals for the first time last year and lost to Buford for the fourth time in one year. They lost to two teams all year last year, Duluth in overtime and Buford four times. That's a hard way to have a season right there. And this year, I'll get into it a little later, they're playing all comers, a three by ball, no good, nothing on the glass. Montgomery gets it, he spins it out to Martin. Martin between the legs, now back to Montgomery. Montgomery stops, floats it, and he was fouled on the shot. You know, one thing I like about Montgomery, it seems like he always trails to play. He'll get the rebound, get it up court quick, and he's trailing, and they give it to Montgomery in the open court. Now, I was wrong. Our first game of the year, I said Montgomery needs to get on the block. He needs to get on the block. But the cat can handle the ball out there on the wing too, man. E.J. Montgomery, the southpaw, misses the first free throw. He already has four points in the contest. Wheeler out to a 10-4 lead. Wait, it's nine. He didn't make that free throw. Uh-oh, check that. They've got it up to 11. I'm going to have to check the book there. I only saw one free throw made. Mm -hmm. You? I saw one. Okay. Canty drives. Canty got foul. No call. Canty gets the rebound. And he stepped out of bounds. So Quincy Canty with the turnover. Canty was a game-time decision, did not play Saturday night in the victory over Oconee, 47 to 42. Has a slight hip flexor, but he saw Wheeler on the schedule and was healed. A long three, <laughs> no good, rebound and ripped out. Austin Johnson gets it to Younger, Younger floats it up and in, Brandon Younger. See, right now, right now Wheeler's just too tall. They're just too tall on the inside, and they're getting those rebounds. But if you want to stop that, you have to put a body on these Wheeler players and just simple box out. Canty uh, pulls the jumper good, Quincy Canty. That medium range game. Scoreboard says 13 to 6. I promise the goodness is 12 to 6, unless somebody's shot was ruled a 3, and it wasn't. Here comes Ball. Ball is running. He's got Jackson with him over to Laronte. Layup good, Laronte Jackson. The Jaguars out in transition. Scoreboard says 13-8. I can't wait to check it. I think it's 12 to 8. Beautiful dish off. Beautiful dish off to this trailer. They get the easy two. So now a little crowd from Athens over there behind them. Martin, now corner three, off the hill. Here's Eastman. Eastman corrals it in the corner. Canty closes out on him. There's Montgomery. Montgomery now over to Younger. They swip it, wrap it around. They move it down low. Montgomery underneath on the right side. No tip. Johnson, no tip. Johnson, no. Rebound, Darren Applin. Applin gets it to Giovanni McDavid, who goes behind the back and coming in transition for the Jaguars. McDavid going to challenge Montgomery. No rebound to Johnson. He outlets it to Eastman. Eastman now going to come. Eastman going to stop. Euro step. Pass it into the corner. Isaac pulls a three. It is off. No good. Giovanni McDavid rips down the rebound with 3.07 to go. And here come the Jags coming back quickly with Cavassier ball. Ball with the left hand dribble. Ball south steps are now going to peel it back. Eastman came with the help. He'll give it over to McDavid, who steps into a three. No, he shoots it over to the right. There's a long three to Laronte Jackson, an air ball. 2.51 to go. Opportunities abounding right now for the Jaguars, and Wheeler's can't allow them to come back. Substitutions now coming to the screen. Here comes J EJ. EJ off the window. Nice. Yes, sir. That's nice. That is nice. That's the big man move I like to see. He's unstoppable, but unstoppable down there. Cavassier ball across the timeline, two and a half to go. Scoreboard says 15 for Wheeler. We have it 14 in our books. We'll check it, though, at the end of the quarter break. 2.22 to go. Gives it to Canty. Canty holds it now. And here's Laronte Jackson. Back out to Giovanni McDavid. McDavid is a senior, and he's been a part of those three semifinal teams, too, and he's an outstanding kick returner, a dangerous kick returner. Ball, a three, no. Rebound, hit the floor. Picked up by Younger. Outlet to Eastman. Eastman caught it. Layup good, Roscoe. Eastman on a break for the easy lay. And a timeout has been called. Yeah, that's a good timeout. That is a good timeout. Coach Thomas, he needs to pull things over, let his team calm down and realize where they are. Let them collect themselves so they can pull this thing out. All right, let's go to the huddle right quick. Mic'd up. Hey. 
they, they tired, yo. We tired too? We sure? Let's play, man. Let's play. Hey. Hey, 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 Austin, Austin, let him bring it to you. Let him bring it to you. Come here, son. I need to talk. Come here. When the ball is dead, deny your guy. We you make it too easy to get the passes up. When they're in that zone, he catch in the middle, seal big so we can get the ball to you. We can't get it to you because you're not sealing big. Gentlemen, one shot and out, man. One shot and out. Let's go, man. Defense on three. One, two, three. Seal. The Atlanta Tip-Off Club annually recognizes the top high school and college players, coaches, and officials and administrators in Metro Atlanta and the state of Georgia. Join the ATOC, nominate players and coaches, or learn more at atltipoffclub.com. All right. Who won Mr. Georgia basketball in 2014, 15, and 16? That is our trivia question. Tweet the names to at SUVTV and at ATL Tip -off Club. First to reply, reply correctly, you win a pair of Atlanta Hawk tickets. Who won Mr. Georgia basketball in 2014, 15, and 16? No, it's not the same person. And you must tweet at SUVTV and at ATL Tip Off Club, or it doesn't count. Jaden Williams, young sophomore, into the contest and immediately gets to the foul line, and he cannot complete the three point play. They did correct the score, by the way. We had it right, 16 to 10. They took the point away from Wheeler. Eastman goes in. Canty fronted the pass, tipped it. Montgomery puts it up. No, he was bothered by McDavid. M Montgomery, the biggest man down there, can't get it to go in. Austin Johnson can't. Montgomery goes up. Canty's playing with him. They cannot get the ball in the basket. They tip it out of bounds. Holt tipped it out. Austin Johnson and E.J. Montgomery both looking around, palms to the sky. We talked about it in the last game, Sly, with Kevin Page. Man, the effort was there, but they could not get a bucket to go. Yeah, sometimes you just got to let that thing fall, man. You got to use that You got to use that little square that's on the back of the backboard. Jaden Williams hands it to Canty. Canty spins it across to Giovanni McDavid. He's picked up defensively very tough by Khalil Hardison, who's checked into the game and a foul by Roscoe Eastman. Khalil Hardison has checked into the game number four for Wheeler and also number 11, Isaiah Holt, the senior, 6'2". Holt has been around a while, and Khalil Hardison has been around a while. Wheeler, they have the potential, as we've been talking here in early season basketball. You guys are wearing me out with that. But <laughs> um, depth, and Wheeler has an opportunity to be very deep. Yes. I don't think they're going to be deeper than deep, but I think they have the opportunity to be very deep. I'm telling you, I think the first four people off their bench can probably play anywhere in the state without a problem, you know, and that's deep. Mick, that is deep on the high school team. Mick David, three, no good. Montgomery handling it in the forecourt. Now over to Roscoe Eastman. Eastman cross-court pass in the corner. There's a three by Hardison. Good. Khalil Hardison off the bench and into the scorebook. Booming home a three ball. You see, that's that deepness you're talking about right there. Guy off the bench coming in, nailing down the wide open three. You need that. You love that. You love to have that. 19 to 10, 15 seconds to go in this first quarter. Switch up. So Demetrius Glenn will be at the free throw line with nine and two ten seconds. Mm -hmm. There you go. Glenn, no good on the free throw. He'll get one more. Demetrius Glenn, a sophomore. The Jaguars floated with sophomores and juniors. He splits them. 19, the scoreboard is all wrong. It's, yeah, that's right, 19-11. Montgomery jump hook, no. Rebound is going to come off, and that will be the end of the first quarter with the Wheeler Wildcats leading the Cedar Shoals Jaguars 19-11. to Well, in our last game, it was Shiloh with a 58-55 to victory over Miller Grove, and they were led by one Elias King, and Elias is joining us here in between the quarter break. Elias, uh, talk about the effort last game and congratulations on the victory. Oh, uh, thank you. Um, it was just coming down to getting stops and um, what's called we had to score. But our coach, he uh, put in defenses to help us get stops. 
And that's all it came down to was getting stops because Miller Grover, they have a great team. They're very talented. So Coach Rivers, probably the best defensive coach ever, was um, adjusted the defense. And that's what it came down to. Talk about the transition from first going up to Huntington Prep, a national school, and then now coming back. Do you feel which transition was better or were both transitions what they were and how have you improved your game with both either one of them? Both transitions was way better. Um, Huntington Prep, I didn't know what I was getting into. I didn't know I was going to become a better man and a, a better player. Um, they, they, they prepped me. I didn't I didn't know there was uh, guys that were that good that were the rank. You know, um, uh, come back home, you know, um, being with my family, being with my friends, being with my community, it, it means everything. So, yeah. You know, and I'm kind of mad at you. You seem like you're bringing all that cold weather from West Virginia down here with us, man. I don't know, man. You should have left that cold weather up there. But you know what? I, uh, honestly, I looked at your game, and I love your game. I love the smoothness of your game. You, you shot a couple of early threes in, in the game, and it was just your shot looked so pretty and looked so nice. Mm -hmm. Who do you kind of compare yourself to when, when you're playing? Well, um, I really don't compare myself to nobody, but I do see similarities like Brandon Ingram and um, uh, Tatum, like the ability to score the basketball. It's um, just smooth and uh, it's just natural. You know, that's a good, good comparison when you say Brandon Ingram, because I remember calling Brandon Ingram when he was a junior, when he was a junior, when he played in North Carolina. Uh, young man had a slender frame like you, but you're a little bit bigger than him. You're a little bit thicker than Brandon Ingram was at that age, man. Uh, what do you see yourself doing just to get that, that toughness? We talked about that in the game uh, today. Mm -hmm. You know, as you were going for a few rebounds, you know, some guys kind of kind of muscled you out the way. Now yeah. they kind of muscled you. So uh, what are we working on to get tough? Uh, I'll be in the weight room a lot, like mainly every day with Shiloh. Uh, we have a, a great strength and conditioning coach named Coach Wiley. Uh, he, he be putting it on us. He's a, a very tough guy. He's a, he's a great guy. And um, he condition us and do everything. Um, as you see, me and my teammates, we're, uh, we're mainly, like, we're very, we're very strong, but we're not, like, as big as other people think. So. Elias, we wish you the best, man, on an outstanding season, man. And we've seen you play three games already. Mm -hmm. And uh, keep bringing that wood, man. Yes, sir. Thank Elias you. King. Of the Shiloh Generals. Thanks, man. Okay. 22 to 16, a three ball, back to back three balls by Isaiah Holt. And it is outstanding for Holt to come down and bang home those threes. We had a three grade right there, and an outstanding job by answering them were the Wheeler Wildcats. All right, so Wheeler 25 to 16, 608 to go. And Younger will bring it into the forecourt. So now, under six minutes to go, 25 to 16. There's a drive. Shot up is no good. Tipped out of bounds. Isaac Martin shot no good. Younger tipped it, but it will stay with Wheeler. Darren Applin will check back into the contest now for the Jaguars. While the Wildcats are out there. Jalen Jackson also in a sophomore for Cedar Shoals, along with Jaden Williams. Here's Martin. Martin holds it. He's worked on by Glenn, who hit a three. He has four points in the contest. While we were talking with Elias King. Gets it in the Younger. Younger put it on the floor. Applin went in there and took it away from him. And a jump ball was called. Jump ball possession arrow will go to Wheeler. 5.33 to go. Twenty-five to sixteen. Five thirty-three to go. Long three in and out, no good by Khalil Hardison, who came off the bench and hit a three. So Younger goes right back up. Applin had nothing for him. Brandon Younger with the hoop. There's a long three back of the iron, no good. Cedar Shoals relying on the three ball deep into the bench, and that's Jaden Williams again. Williams over to Glenn. Glenn a three. Good, Demetrius. Glenn a three ball. 
And that's how you cut down some of that size and some of those uh, rebounding advantage by out hustling Wheeler and knocking down the big three. Holt trap, they get it in. The at Montgomery, Montgomery goes up, counted, and the foul. EJ Montgomery. He, he's, just, he's just too much down there, Joe. Oh, there's, just, there's, there's no answer, especially with Canty's out of the game. And Coach Eldrico Thomas trying to find something. He can't have Candy out there all night. He's going deep into the bitch. Here comes Quintelius Dillard, a young sophomore, into the contest. Once again, remember, we've got our trivia question coming up in the second half when you have the opportunity to win a free pair of Hawks tickets. Montgomery unable to complete the three-point play. 29-19, a 10-point Wheeler lead on Cedar Shoal. 4.40 to go. The Jaguars and the Wildcats in the nightcap of day two here at the Jarrett Cook Classic. Down low underneath, Javon David is wide open with a layup, his second field goal. That's great movement without the basketball. He passed it and he cut, and then he was wide open right there underneath the basket. 4.30 to go, spins it over now. Kenny Burns into the contest, and a turnover, good steal. Jaguars with Jalen Jackson gets the steal, up ahead to Glenn, Glenn layup, good. Demetrius Glenn off the bench, and he's filling up the scorebook. He has nine already, 29 to 23. Jaguars in a 2-3 zone, down to EJ down low, and a foul called, offensive foul on EJ Montgomery. Yeah, he tried to clear out his face, tried to clear out his face. He had a smaller man on him, so he tried to back him down and clear out some space. Now, right now, if you're Cedar Shows, this is the time you make your run. You know, you have most of the starters out of the game. Well, you got a few substitutions, Well, no. You have the starters, and they're into their bench, so now you make your run. You try to catch up to this Wheeler team. Quincy Canty back into the contest. He has six for the Jaguars, but it's Demetrius Glenn's nine off the bench. Giovanni McDavid, there's Applin. Applin gonna go off the window good, Darren Applin. Applin, a senior season veteran, and Coach Eldrico Thomas last year during that run said, I gotta find some minutes for him because he does everything I ask him to do. A long three, Kenny Burns no good. Canty gets on the glass. Jags trailing by four to the Wheeler Wildcats. 3.30 to go, Giovanni McDavid driving right in the lane, goes up, get it out of here. Get that shot out of here, it's sent away by Austin Johnson. Great block by Austin Johnson. Austin Johnson, long, lanky kid, man. He, you know, what is he, about 6'6", six, six, his arm's about 7 feet, man, his long arms on that kid. I look down in the audience and I see Snipe Hall, who was on that team last year, Quincy Canty, just so smooth. That shot right there around that free throw line, it's, it's nice, it's money, it's money right there around that free throw line. 29-27, 3.14 to go. Roscoe, jumper, foul line, off, no good, Johnson got the rebound. And a foul call, and it will be on the Jaguars. Let's see. And it will be on Giovanni McDavid. See, I don't like that. I don't like that. He, he, he boxed this man out. He tried to box him out, but the taller guy had the height on him and went over his back. That should have been a foul the other way. You got to reward the player for boxing the man out. There comes, there comes a slide third cousin into the game, Cedric Rucker, number 30. And here comes Giovanni McDavid. That's that big body, that's that 5'11 you were talking about down there. Rucker wanted it down there on the block. There's a three by Glenn, no good. Rebound comes into the hands of Johnson. He gives it over to Younger. Younger surveying the floor with a left hand dribble. Now he's gonna try to blow by Glenn, goes all the way to the hoop. No, Johnson put back up and in good, Austin Johnson. Austin Johnson being a power on the offensive rebounds. He has four, and that's four by my count. Baseline, drive. Kenny Burns trying to tie up Applin. Now he gives it to Rucker. Rucker holds it, pivoting with it. Nobody coming to the ball, so Canty has it. He's worked on by Johnson. Canty now going to operate. Step back, spins it over to Giovanni. Giovanni going to attack the lane. Goes behind the back, a beautiful pass. Get it out of here. Send away, Cedric Rucker. That's what happens, Fly. <laughs> it was a little 5'11", and all that mass, you get that stuff sent away. I would have dunked it. Rejection. You would have dunked it. I would have dunked it. I told you this wasn't no nerf hoop. Austin Johnson now going back to the locker room. Not sure what happened. Off the drop step, I would have dunked it. Inbound to McDavid. They give it to Rucker again. Rucker goes up and in. Work. Hey, and you know what he did? He used that size to work his way in and get the easy two. Use that body. That's what I'm talking about, big man. Use the body. Jeremiah Prudit into the contest. A turnover. Canty with the steal. Canty up ahead to Glenn. Glenn had to recover it. 
Sends it to the back. There's McDavid. McDavid dumps it off to Rucker, who wasn't ready. Butterfinger. And a timeout, 30-second timeout will be called, and it is charged to the Wheeler Wildcats. Stat Road, your source for youth sports highlights. View youth sports highlights whenever, wherever. Stat Road, Joel Hillsman, Sylvester Williams here with you. 149 to go, 31 to 29. Wheeler leading Cedar Shoals, and actually, I need to update it. It is a 10 to 2 Cedar Shoals run because it was 29 to 19. 31 29. We had the Elias King uh, interview in there. I had to make sure I kept the book right and forgot about the, the run. So we'll reset it for you. 149 to go. Cedar Shoals is in the orange. Wheeler is in the white. It is Rucker, Canty, McDavid, Dillard. Lorante Jackson, the five on the floor for the Jags. It is Eastman, Martin, Younger, Kenny Burns, and Jeremiah Pruitt on the floor for the Wheeler Wildcats. They're going to eat some of that clock, trailing by two. There's a three ball. Martin, no good. Canty tips it, gets the rebound, outlets it to Dillard. The pass was too far, and Eastman got the steal. Now here comes Eastman back this way. Dillard went reaching in. Eastman going to try to attack. Spins it to the corner. Kenny Burns, a three. Good. Kenny Burns' first field goal. It's a three ball. Beautiful shot by the youngster over there, the junior, knocking many, down that corner three. How many lefties does Wheeler have? <laughs> Burns is a lefty. Montgomery. Montgomery's a lefty. Martin is a lefty. I think Younger is a lefty, too. Yep, yep. McDavid hesitates, drives ball, knocked away and poked out of bounds. Cedric Rucker in the game, and I think he needs to go ahead and get in the game now because the ball is going to come his way. Do they have oxygen over there for him? He's ready. Jackson pass, tip, knocked away. It's a turnover. Martin with the steal, outletting the Eastman. 52 seconds left before the half. Eastman lost it, now picks it up and gives it to Martin. Martin spins it over to Younger. Younger going to drive, put it up with the right hand and score. Brandon Younger, he has eight in the contest. Brandon Younger, another one of those long, lean guys for, uh, for, for Wheeler. And he just made it look so nice and smooth as he went to the basket and laid that thing in a little floater with the right hand. Canty now spins it over to Jackson. Jackson going to drive, stop, give it back to Dillard. Dillard going to pull a three. Hill on the rim, no good. Dillard got his own board. 19 seconds, gives it to Canty. Canty spins it over to McDavid. McDavid now in the corner and a timeout called, a 30-second timeout called by El Drico Thomas and the Cedar Show staff, 36 to 29, 15 and 1, 10 seconds. See, right now, right now, Coach Thomas is going to earn his money right now. He saw it 15 seconds ago. So what I think he's going to do, he's going to sit up and try to set something up so Canty can get that mid-range jumper, that little free throw line jumper. Let's go Mike up to Coach Thomson. Everything out high, I'm sorry, everything in here, but out high, don't go out there and guard that. Don't go out there and guard that. Sag in the hill. Uh, 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 uh. They're going to shoot that ball about, about four seconds left. Let's squeeze it, kill the floor, and get a shot for the quarter over with. All right? Let's go, man. Let's go. And then stop, man. Stop. Defense on three. One, two, three. Let's go. We're fine. And, and you know, I think what Coach Thompson is saying is he doesn't really respect that outside shot, that deep shot from Cedar Shows. So he's going to sag a little bit to the inside. And I'm telling you, watch that mid-range right there with Canty, right around the free throw line. I can agree with you. Cedar Shoals with only two made three-pointers, both of them coming from Demetrius Glenn, also a young sophomore. Notice I keep saying sophomores. Canty a sophomore. Glenn a sophomore. Johnson, who's not able to play, a sophomore. Seven seconds, ball tip, younger, out of bounds with five and four, 10 seconds. And Coach Thomas, just the way looking at him, upset it about the execution of the play, calls out another play. Canty will be the trigger man, five and four, 10 seconds. In the Cavassier ball, ball is gonna drive. Ooh. Nothing's there, stop, gives it in the corner. McDavid, a three, no good at the end of the half. And Eastman's trying to figure out where he is. Eastman got the most solid screen ever set on him. Eastman, I'm, oh my goodness, poor that young man. That young man doesn't know where he is right now. At the half, Wheeler 36, Cedar Shoals 29. Cedar Shoals finished with a 10-7 ah, to 7 push there. Halftime right here on SteveSUVTV.com.
I'm Sam Crenshaw reminding you about the inaugural Hawks Station Holiday Tip-Off Classic. It comes your way December 21st through 23rd at North Cross High School. Here's what the coaches have to say. When you put those two names in front of something, it is going to be run first class. Uh, the level of competition is going to be very good. Crowds are going to be real good over here. So it's just really exciting for us to be in it and be able to play that first night uh, in it right here. And so, and, you know, and for me, an opportunity to come back and, and uh, coach in this facility again is really special. I just love being a leader. Because I like to punish people. I think the big thing is just taking the right shot. Just to embarrass people. I'm a beast. I do my thing whenever I'm putting on someone's neck. My adults will be the best in four years. It always comes a breaking point in everything that you do. But here's what the great ones do when a breaking point comes. Everybody loves the game when it's tight, when everything is going well. You hit the shot, but it gets to a certain point, which the breaking point, meaning at a certain point, somebody is going to retreat and not want it so much, and somebody is going to say, this is why I'm playing the game about
Welcome back inside North Gwinnett High School in the North Gwinnett Gymnasium. I'm Joe Hillsman, joined by Sylvester Williams. We get ready for the second half. Wheeler leading Cedar Shoals 36 to 29. If your gym, if your school's gym floor took a selfie, how would it look? In addition to new court construction, CBA Sports offers maintenance services that can help your court look and feel better. Visit cbasports.com today to schedule a consultation or learn more. Statro, your source for youth sports highlights. Also, I want to thank the Atlanta Tip-Off Club, Statro, CBA Sports, the Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, and Josh Mendoza, Virtual Properties Reality. As we begin the second half, Cedar Shoals will be in possession. They've got the orange tops on, orange tops, orange bottoms, orange numbers, and they're trimmed in the blue. It is Ball Jack. Canty, McDavid, and Applin, the starters for this second half for the Jaguars. Montgomery, Johnson, Martin, Younger, and Eastman, the starters for Wheeler here in this second half. Ball gets it in the corner. Ball going to go baseline. Now over to Jackson. Jackson to Canty. Jumper from 16. No good. E.J. Montgomery snatches down the rebound. Seven-point lead. Here comes Martin. Martin, boom, dribbles up with the left-hand layup. Good. Isaac Martin, he has five points in the contest. Some life over here, man. So now here's Canty. Canty gives it over now to McDavid. McDavid spins it into the corner. There's a three by Cavassier. Ball! A smooth drink. Cavassier, a three ball. 38-32 now. So Johnson now comes over to Martin. Martin now to Johnson. Johnson holds looking at that 2-3 Cedar Shoals defense. Montgomery has it now worked on by K Canty. They come in, rip the jump ball, and it will go over to the Wheeler Wildcats. They will retain the possession. Six-point ball game, 6.40 to go, third quarter, 38-32. Wheeler in white with the lead, and they'll be inbounding it with Martin, who fires it into the backcourt to Eastman. Here's Eastman. Eastman now. A long three. It is off no good. Johnson got the rebound. Goes back up and dunks it home. Sit on the rim, Austin Johnson. His second field goal. So now 6-23 and counting 40 to 32. Goes behind the back. And now here's Ball. Ball worked on by Eastman. Now to Canty. Canty has it out between the top. Now gives it over to Lorante Jackson. Lorante jump stops in the left elbow, stops, holds it. There's Canty. Canty now works and pulls it back out. Ball took a look at it and wanted to pull the three, but did not. So he gives it over to Canty. Canty now going to put it on the floor. Stop. There's a jump from beyond the foul line. Good. Quincy Canty, very pure. He's in double figures now with 10 for the Jaguars, 40 to 34. Here's Martin. Martin to Eastman. Wheeler trying to look to pull away. Hollow action down low on the other side. E.J. Montgomery. All that height, all that size, Wildcats using it. 42-34, eight-point lead. McDavid through the lane, put it up, no. Johnson gets the rebound, outlets it, and it was knocked away across the way, and let's see, out of bounds, it will be Wheeler Ball. 5.34 to go. Don't forget now, we've got our trivia question coming up in the fourth quarter, and if you are the first to reply correctly, you'll win a pair of Atlanta Hawks tickets. Inside, high low, Montgomery turns around on the other side, no good. Canty gets the rebound and gives it over now to Javonne McDavid. You can tell McDavid's senior leadership now and taking control. Spins it over to the right side. They'll pull it back out now, Lorante Jackson. Jackson now has it. You just knocked me out. And here's Canty. Canty now holds it and now spins it back. It's knocked around. And here comes Appling. Appling now in the corner. Going to go down the baseline all the way as Jackson kicks it back. McDavid, pump fake, going to drive, stop. There's Canty, foul line jumper, good. But a three-second violation called on Cedar Shoals. Canty has been money right there at that mid-range of that elbow. Quincy Canty, remember he was the Region 8 Player of the Year last year at Athens. Christian Younger catches it and gives it to Montgomery. E.J. Montgomery having a field day now, folks. He's up to 12 points in the contest, and they all have been in the paint. Minus the little jumper. Cavassier Ball spins it back out. Ball now gives it over to McDavid. McDavid going to put it on the floor, kicks it back over, and now... And now gives it out to the top. Canty spins it over now. Here's Ball. Cavassier going to drive. Cavassier put it up off the window. Got the roll. 
It bounced around and fell in. Cavassier ball with five points. All of them now here in this third quarter and a timeout call. Cedar Shoals trying to pull close, just unable to do so. 44-36. He used the little man shot right there. Into the Wheeler huddle, full timeout. They got to make the second, third, and fourth, and fifth uh, effort. They being patient right now. They being real patient. They pass the ball four, five, six times. So maybe we got a guard four, five, six passes. They gonna fold. They gonna fold. We just gotta keep guarding. We gotta keep guarding. They're all guards, and we all pretty much guards too. So if it's getting hard to get through those switch, I mean get through those screens, let's talk and switch. Let's talk and switch. Help side. We gotta close it down just a little bit more. They still get through those cracks. Just because we too far on the help side. Our fish, we get whatever we want right now. Keep forcing that thing down their throat. We get stopped. Let's run up the floor, guys. They're gonna fold. We just gotta keep guarding. Keep guarding, guys. Keep guarding. It's an ugly game. We just got to get ugly stops. We got to get ugly stops. It ain't cute right now. Keep guarding. I promise you. Keep guarding. They're going to fold. They're going to fold. Offense, keep getting good shots right now. All right? We're fine. We're fine. Keep guarding. All right? Let's go, man. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Keep guarding. Keep guarding. Win on three. One, two, three. And that's it. Keep guarding. Keep guarding. That's what you have to do. Anytime you have a team like this and you have them on the ropes, it's, it's up to you to go ahead and knock them out. It's up to you to go ahead and put that defensive pressure on and just take their heart completely out of the game. That's what Coach Thompson is talking about. Keep guarding. Keep guarding. Forty-four, thirty-six. Montgomery has it for Wheeler. He fell to the floor. They dive on it. Jump ball, and the possession will go to Cedar Shoals. So Wheeler out of the timeout, can't get anything now. Cavassier ball coming over to the bench. It looked like he was injured. And Demetrius Glenn will need to check in. Cavassier ball very ups. Yeah. I'm Trying to figure out if it's the ankle or the back of the uh, calf. Yeah, it's some, he's in pain, whatever it is. Demetrius Glenn now will check in. Yeah. I have to go back and look. I did not see. I don't know if Montgomery fell on the back of him or what happened. Because whatever it is, it, it's tough. I know he has a lot of look of anguish on his face over there. McDavid gives it to Canty. Canty now to Glenn. Glenn around the screen, knocked away by Eastman. Eastman are going to pick it up now into the forecourt for the Wheeler Wildcats. The team exchanged turnovers. Eastman float. No. E.J. Montgomery tried to dunk it home. He missed it. Eastman, corner, three. No good. Montgomery, another board. Lost it on the way up. Scrappy, out of bounds, and it'll go over to Wheeler. Just now, during that little stoppage, E.J. Montgomery, I'm going to tell on you, E.J., he looked at me and shook his head like, can't nobody out here guard me. <laughs> and he got that height, and he does have the height. Knit and grit, though, man, and heart, who knows? E.J. having a pretty fulfilling night, 12 points so far. 12 points, looks like 11 rebounds so far. Shot, no good. Glenn out of the guard spot, rebound, and he gets it up to Javani McDavid. McDavid will bring it into the full court. We're coming up on the three-and-a-half-minute mark. Glenn pump fake. Glenn going to go. Guy got his shot blocked by Johnson. There's been a number of blocked shots. It was a nice move by Glenn. So Glenn just retreats back beyond the arc, misses the three. Applin got the rebound out of bounds, and it will go to Wheeler. That's a tough one. That's a tough one for Cedar Souls right there. Anytime you have a wide-open look like that, you got to knock that down if you want to break into this lead. Glenn just a sophomore. Eastman down the lane and floats it home. Roscoe Eastman. His second field goal. He has not been feeling it from distance as he had, man, in the McEachin game where he could not miss. In the early going, Glenn gets it underneath to McDavid for the score. Javon McDavid with six points. You know, a lot rests on Roscoe Eastman's shoulders this year. If, if, if Wheeler wants to make it real deep into the playoffs this year, a lot depends on how, Ro how, how, how Roscoe Eastman plays. The Cedar Shows crowd across the way here in the nightcap. Foul called on Quincy Cancy. Cancy, his first. Team first. That's our first foul called in the contest. Lorante Jackson goes out. Checking in now is Jaden Williams. Down low underneath. No. <laughs> Offensive foul called, and EJ Montgomery didn't like it. EJ picks up his second. But they call it on Austin Johnson now. Yeah, Austin gave him that forearm shiver, that good old 
I won't call it NWA forearm shove. That, that wasn't even WWE. You had a better look at it. I just saw EJ complaining. I actually glanced down at my book, so good correction there. 2.40 to go. Don't forget our trivia question coming up in the fourth quarter. You can win a pair of tickets, 46 to 38, a pair of Atlanta Hawks tickets. The jumper is good by Javonne McDavid, short corner. He has eight in the contest. Jaguars now within six. Get it down low to Johnson. Johnson, foul, and it was on the floor. They keep getting the five and six and cannot get closer. Arms length, the foul called on Darren Apple in the senior. But you know what I like about that? As soon as they break that score down and they're the five to six, Wheeler goes right back to the post. They go right back down low. Jumper, Montgomery, no good. Glenn gets the rebound. Outlet it, Canty was not looking. Spins it up ahead. There's a long three. Martin, no good. Badly missed. Williams got the rebound. Up ahead to Canty. Canty could not get the pass, so now he's going to lose it. Take it away. Here comes Younger. Younger over to Eastman. Catch, fire, a three, no. Montgomery follow, yes. E.J. Montgomery, offensive rebound and put back. Jaguars could not get a shot there in two opportunities. McDavid brings it across the timeline with 150 to go and tells him to slow down. He's picked up by Isaac Martin. Gets a screen from Canty. Johnson came out, so he's going to go baseline on him anyway. Kick it into the corner. Glenn, a three, good. Demetrius Glenn is feeling it from beyond the arc. A three ball. It's a five-point game. Cedar Shoals is chipping and chipping and chipping, but they cannot catch Wheeler. Down low, Montgomery up and foul, E.J. Montgomery. Wheeler just too big. They got too much size, Sly. It's too much size down there. One thing I like, they're, not a, they're smart enough to keep going back to it. Why not? You got a, a potential McDonald's All-American playing down there on the block. Give it to him. Keep giving it to him. Keep letting the big man eat and letting him work down low. And that's how you go ahead and just push this thing on out and win the game. Now the referees now come to the score table. Let's check and see what the issue is going to be. Do they want more time put on? One ref looking at the clock. Not sure what it is while we have a moment here. Let's remind you about Josh Mendoza and Virtual Properties Realty. Per the Atlanta Business Chronicle, Virtual Properties Realty has more buy, sell transactions than any other real estate office in the Atlanta area. Visit joshmendoza.virtualpropertiesrealty.net to browse listings or add your property to their state-of-the-art search engine. Yeah, I want to give a shout-out to who is this? DJ Kraft. I guess it's uh, Demetrius. He said, little bro's balling out. See, little bro just hit the three. Now he's tweeting out. Be sure if you want to tweet us, tweet us at SUV TV. We'll shout you out on there if you tweet us at SUV TV. Tweet me at Slider Sports Guy T. Joel at Montgomery missed the free throw. Jay Hillsman. Williams missed the jumper. So back this way, here comes Isaiah Holt. Holt floater, no. Johnson, rebound. Cedar ripping in there with it in a foul call. And he, he brought it down. He made a classic big man mistake right there. He had the ball up high, and to regather himself, he brought the ball down. That's one of those plays like we talked about last game. Leave that ball up high and go back up with it. Inbound now. Here's Wheeler in the Montgomery. Montgomery turn, ball knocked away, and it'll go off of Montgomery to Cedar Shoals. Montgomery now, you keep saying it. He's got all the advantage, he and Johnson. They're taking advantage of it, but as the game continues to progress, I'm beginning to read a little body language. Mm -hmm. Here's McDavid. He's getting frustrated. He's getting frustrated because he's not getting the call. McDavid, jumper, good. Javonte McDavid. But one thing I can say about these refs, they're letting them play. They're that letting both sides play because that was definitely a foul. 49-45. <laughs> Gives it over to Holt. Holt catches fire, a three. Off, no good. McDavid gets the rebound with 35 seconds. The Jaguars throw it away, though. Holt gives it up, dumped off to Montgomery, dunked it home. E.J. Montgomery chin-ups. Doing chin-ups on the rim. 51 to 45 and a foul in the backcourt on Isaiah Holt. <laughs> they call that foul. <laughs> now, Joe. I'm Joe, glad Joe. Coach Preston ain't over here with us. Joe, I mean, I'm talking about they're, doing, they're throwing some serious haymakers down there in the paint. They fouled him on the arm on the jumper, and he calls the touch foul 50 feet away from the basket. Here's McDavid. He's got Holt on him. Holt reached in. Now McDavid going to go by him, and a foul called on Isaiah Holt again. Holt turns around, palms to the sky. But the thing is, they haven't been calling fouls yeah. until the last two minutes, so I'm not really upset. 
as a spectator. You know, true enough, it was a foul. But my thing is, if you hadn't called it all game, why you want to call it now? 51 to 45, fall down, and now foul called on Johnson. There's the technical. On who? <laughs> There's the technical. I think they gave it on our uh, Eastman. A technical foul. Yep, Eastman called for the technical foul. His second as his first technical foul. So now Quincy Canty will go to the line. Mark that down now, the 7.7 second mark left. But see, Joel, that's a sign of immaturity right there. That's a sign. You don't want that out of your senior leader. He's not a senior. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, you don't want that out of your point guard. I'm sorry. I don't know why I meant to say point guard. You don't want that out your point guard. Your point guard has to be the calmest man on the court. He has to calm everybody down. He has to control the game. You can't get mad at the ref and, and not sure what he said to the ref. I don't want to guess on what he said, but but you can't. It's, it's one person you can't talk to. You can't talk to the referee. 51 to 47. You can talk to him. Trust me, I done talked to him. We done had this come, so you're not going to pull that one up. Eastman got the tech, and that's what it is. It counts as a personal file. Glenn looking to inbound with 7 and 7, 10 seconds. Looks, looks he goes into the backcourt to Cavassier ball. Ball now going to cross the timeline with four. Ball now reaching, and there's a foul call, and that's going to be on Nash Kelly, who's into the contest, a sophomore. Whistle's flying out of the, blowing the P out of the ball now, out of the whistle. 16 fouls are going to be side out of bounds with two and two, 10 seconds. Glenn now looks, looks. Looks, Jackson catches, pump fakes, a three at the horn, no. We're at the end of the third quarter at a trivia question coming up in the fourth. Wheeler, 51, Cedar Shoals, 47, mic'd up now with. Right now, 19 to 11 advantage Wheeler. So Cedar Shoals has outscored Wheeler in the last two quarters. Eight minutes on the clock. He's Sylvester Williams. I'm Joel Hillsman. Glad that you're with us. Wheeler and Cedar Shoals, 7A versus 5A. Two top five teams in each class, respectively. Cedar Shoals in orange. Wheeler in white. And a foul called on Cedar. That'll be their fifth. Wheeler with 16 fouls. So Cedar Shoals could take advantage, or Wheeler would be able to. Who's going to take advantage of the foul shots here in this fourth quarter? 51 to 47. Holt has it. Holt going to pull a long three off the rim and got the roll living right. Isaiah Holt, a three, his third one of the contest. He has nine. Push the lead back out now. They're the six. Around the screen, Markel Allen goes. There's Rucker. Rucker back in. Jump stop and walked out of the gym. <laughs> Doing a little bit too much on that one. Cedric Rucker, a senior, big body mass. Markel will go out. Allen, and is that Cavassier checking back in? Let's see, Cavassier ball, yes, we'll check in. Now, while you're calling the game, I'm going to keep my eye on the matchup down low. And Rucker and EJ Montgomery get and, into it. And that's the matchup I want to keep my eye on. And I'm going to tell you why. Rucker is giving up about a foot to E.J. Montgomery, but E.J. Montgomery is giving up about 50 pounds to Rucker. So what's going to happen right now? I can tell you what's going to happen. Rucker's going to body E.J. up, and he's going to get in E.J.'s head because Rucker can't compete with E.J. As, as a man up basketball player against basketball player. But what happens, he can get in E.J.'s head and throw E.J. Off, the, off his game. That's what can happen. Inbound, both teams now with six fouls. 
And, and the thing, now look at the ref. The ref is actually watching those two. That baseline ref has an eye on those two. That's the lead official. And now Wheeler is going to play the whole the ball game. Uh -huh. A minute gone by, 54 to 47. Is this the way to calm it down? So now Eldrico Thomas looks over at his Jaguars. I don't think he's going to let him do it right now. He wants to get him out that zone. He wants him to come out and play him. The Cedar Shoals crowd, there's more Cedar Shoals here than Wheeler, believe it or not. There's a drive, bounces it off. Younger lost it, it's on the ground. Eastman is going to recover it with six and a half to go. Inside, the Montgomery up and in, count it, and the foul. It's a score and one more for EJ Montgomery. And see, that's what EJ needs to do. EJ, EJ needs to get two feet away from the basket, and no one on this court can handle him, anything close to handling him. All right, once again, it's time for our trivia question. Who won Mr. Georgia basketball in 2014, 2015, and 2016? Who won Mr. Georgia basketball in 2014, 2015, and 2016? Tweet the names at SUVTV and at ATL Tip Off Club. Tweet the names too at SUVTV and at ATL Tip Off Club. First to reply correctly wins a pair of Hawks tickets. Atlanta Hawks tickets. You know what's interesting, though? You talk about the girth of Rucker. He's getting ready to go to the free throw line. Makes me think about number 34 on that bench, Darius Gaddy for Wheeler. Yes. And, you know, but you can't kind of do that when you've got that kind of size up there. Free throw no good from Rucker, unable to complete it. 56 to 47. It's a nine-point Wheeler lead. They're trying to take it in over the 10 with 6.15 to go. Eastman now going to come out. Ball, Glenn, Rucker, Appling. And McDavid on the floor. They get it down to E.J. Montgomery. <laughs> Dunked it home and won E.J. Montgomery. Enough said. He should have 40 on the night, to be honest with you. He should. He should. But another thing is, though, I'm also impressed with his toughness. I didn't think that E.J. Montgomery was this, this tough as he is because he's getting, he's getting hit down there, Joe. They're hitting him down there in the paint. They're hitting him. He, he's earning everything he's getting down there because they're hitting him. Cannot complete the three-point play. Cavassier ball has it. 11-point lead. Six minutes to go. Fourth quarter. Cedar Show's been scrapping and clawing. They've outscored Wheeler in quarters two and three, but that first quarter is what did him in. McDavid holds it, now puts it on the floor. McDavid bounces it back out to Cavassier. Now to McDavid. Looking. Looking. Now he's putting it on the floor. Now the ball, no ball moving now. Cavassier stepped right through. They're going to push him, and a traveling violation call. Cedar Shows did not know what they wanted to do right there, confused on offense. Yeah, yeah, that's one of those times you just got to set up that offensive play and run your offense. You run your offense, good things will happen. So here's... Younger, younger to Montgomery. Montgomery drove right through the lane, put it up. No. Rebound comes down to Quincy Canty. Canty having a not solid night with 12. It's quiet, though, but he's coming up on double-digit rebounds. Ball out of control. No good. Here comes Younger. Younger bounces it up ahead to Montgomery. Montgomery picked up by Canty. He spins in the lane, put it up with the right hand. No. Canty fights for the rebound. Canty comes away with it, looking up. Long lead pass to Glenn. Glenn catch, fire a three. No front iron. Tip, rebound right back to the tree is Glenn. And right now, if you're Wheeler, you can't look at the ref anytime something happens. You're not going to get that call. You got to play ball. Glenn with 14 in the game across the lane and a foul call on Quincy Canty. So Demetrius Glenn now lighting it up. He has three threes and nine, 12, 14 points, and Quincy Canty with 12 points, 58 to 49. Wheeler and Cedar Shoals, glad that you're with us on the SUVTV.com. EJ Montgomery now, of course, as we mentioned in the beginning, will be the key factor in this ball game. And he's now beginning to fill it up, although he can't make all his free throws. Canty now with the double-double as he gets that rebound. And now here is Giovanni McDavid. 
McDavid now gives it to Glenn. Glenn going to go down the lane, dump it off to Appling. Appling, the layup in is good and a quick timeout. A full timeout called by Eldrico Thomas after the Darren Applin layup. 59 to 51, four and a half to go. And it is an eight point ball game. And see, that's beautiful right there. That point guard came in, brought Montgomery out, and just dropped it off to his man, and he laid it up for the easy two. That's great basketball. You pull a shot blocker away from the basket so your cutter can have an a easy, uncontested layup. The referees now are also having a timeout themselves. They huddle up down here. And I think they're going to see how they're going to go the last four and a half of this contest. Cedar Shoals with nine team fouls. Wheeler with seven team fouls. Now, if they call it close now, I, I, I might go crazy, Joe. Well, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, get ready. <laughs> if they start calling fouls now. Get ready. We just crossed 10 o'clock in the east. We will not get out of here till 1030. <laughs> being a leader because I like to punish people. I think the big thing is just taking the right shot. Just to embarrass people. I'm a beast. I do my thing whenever I'm putting on someone's neck. My adults will be the best in four years. SUV TV and at ATL Tip Off Club. Have to have both of them. At SUV TV and at ATL Tip Off Club. Eastman missed. Canty got the rebound, and now the Jaguars are back this way. Here's McDavid. McDavid going to pull a long three. Badly missed. Rebound on the floor. Tip out of bounds off of Cedar Shoals. It'll be Wheeler basketball. And who is that? Mr. Basketball, Georgia Mr. Basketball. 2014, 2015, and 2016. I know two of them. I don't know the third one. Shot is in and good, and that's going to be Isaiah Hope off the bench. A three from Glenn, no good. Tip goes out of bounds, and it will go to Wheeler. Ten-point lead. Cedar Shoals made a push. Got it all the way down to four. Wheeler's just too big, though, just too big. See, the show doesn't have enough size. And I must remind our viewers that my eligibility was up. I did not win Mr. Basketball in 2014, 15, or 16. I look around and see some of the Buford coaches here and makes me think about Marcus Watson. I mean, watching Watson and Canty this year is going to be fun. Oh, yeah. In that region, 8-5-A. Not only is the state champ from that region, the state runner-up is in that region, too, to see the show Jaguar. And they don't have Philandrius Fleming, Ooh. my goodness, but... Oh, man, Wheeler has E.J. Montgomery, and now Montgomery just having his way as he should, and they push it out to 12. There's a three from Kenny out of the corner. No good. Rebound comes down to Isaiah Hope. He swallows it up with 3.08 to go. There comes Eastman into the full court. Wheeler now going to try to turn it on. Eastman goes around, lost it back to Montgomery, put it up and in good. Montgomery, man, this it, it, is like playing ball on a Nerf hoop. I'm telling you, he's eating out there right now. Right now he's eating everything that comes down his way. He's put, put, taking it up and putting it in. 27 in the game for E.J. Montgomery. Here's Cavassier ball. Ball holds it and now spins it up to Vic David. Vic David now the ball over to Glenn. Glenn wanted to pull it. They're playing the zone defense out of bounds, and it is off of Montgomery. Applin, Canty, Glenn, ball, and now Dillard is going to come in, and Demetrius Glenn is going to take a seat. Glenn, a sophomore, Came over from Clark Central, and he's a sniper, and you can tell that as he's hit three threes in this contest. 65 to 51, two and a half to go. Clock running, and Cavassier Ball now has it. Ball wanted to pull it with 220 to go. Cedar Shows looks content now at the moment. Long three ball, good. Cavassier Ball, his second three pointer. And Wheeler has been daring Cedar to shoot that. And Cedar Shoals calls another timeout, 65 to 54. That rope showcases youth sport highlights and gives a portion of its revenue back to team. Visit statrope.com today 
to learn how your team can partner with Stat Row. Well, fellas, just an update as far as our ATL tip-off club a trivia contest. We've got a couple people that have had some of it right, but not all of it right. Some of them haven't added SQV TV and at, at ATL tip-off club. You have to answer the 2014, 2015, and 2016 Mr. Georgia basketball. You have to at least have that first initial and that last name correct. And you also have to at SUV TV and at the ATL tip off club. We've had some close, but no cigar. That close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades, Marcus. Doesn't count in SUV trivia. You must mention at SUV TV and at ATL tip off club. That's, that's what it's about. The Atlanta tip off club annually recognizes the top high school and college players, coaches, officials, and administrators in the Metro Atlanta and the state of Georgia during the ATLC. Nominate players and coaches to learn more at atltipoffclub.com. And got to have those names right as well. They can be a letter off. I only know two, so I, I can't. And I should know, but it's one of them things, I'm going to be honest. As much basketball as I watch, I, I, I don't know who the Mr. Georgia basketball is from 14. And I'll even give a clue since we're running late into the contest. Ooh. 29 for Montgomery on that dunk. 2014. Oh, it looks like we might have a winner. I know 2014. I don't. And it looks like we finally got it done. Isaiah Hope and one Isaiah Hope. Looks like Joseph Rogers just barely got Game Elite ATL. Rogers said Jakeenan Gant for 2014. That's who I didn't know. Jalen Brown for 2015 and Altariq Gilbert for 2016. Game Elite ATL was very close, but they said Jay Grant for 2014. So the devil is in the details. They just missed it. And that's ironic. They definitely got the Jalen Brown part right, the former Game Elite ATL player who was doing a great job at the NBA level, by the way. Fabulous job. Long three, no good. As they start to head for the exits, those who made the trip, I'm proud of those folks over there from Athens that came out here. Got a bigger crowd than Wheeler got. Holt, another layup. He is filling it up here in the fourth quarter. And now Wheeler has blown it wide open, an 18-point lead. There's a nice drive by Cavassier Ball. Ball with 10 points, all of them here in this second half. Too little, too late, though, with 70 seconds to go. He was smooth just like his name. I know that's right. He had that three earlier like that. There goes Montgomery down low. He's got 31. That's, that's, that's just too much right there. <laughs> Cedar Shoals, a top five team in, th in 5A, and I think you can see why. But if they run into some height, it may be some trouble. And Buford has a little height. They don't have this much height. Warner Robbins has got some scores. EJ padding it now, 33. And Wheeler, a top five team in 7A. Jay Avani right back at him. In the final 35 seconds, 76 to 58. Cedar Shoals had two solid quarters, the second and the third. They didn't start well and they didn't finish well. And Coach Eldrico Thomas was going to do mass substitutions, but they're not going to get the basketball back as now. Barry Younger, Brandon Younger is going to hold it and spin it over to the left side. Final 10 seconds. Well, day two of the ninth annual Jarrett Cook Classic will come to a close with the Wheeler Wildcats taking a 76-58 victory over the Cedar Shoals Jaguars. Day two in the books. I'm going to leave it to y'all tomorrow, man. Y'all have fun over here tomorrow. But we'll be here tomorrow. But you know what, Joe? This wasn't a 20-point ball game, man. I don't, I don't I, think it no, was a 20-point no. ball game. See the souls, they're going to be tough. But you know, you said something that kind of stuck with me, and this is what I kind of like about Georgia basketball. You said last year the state champions, the state champion and the state runner-up came from the same region. Well, back home in South Carolina, you have the upper state and the lower state. So if you play in the same region, the most you can do is play each other in the upper state. So a lot of times you have the two best teams in the same region, they'll never get a chance to play in the state championship. But Georgia, it's just based on your ranking. It's just based where you're ranking. And they throw everybody in the pot. I love that, man. I, I love that, Joe. Everybody gets a chance to make it to the championship. 
Just adding up some quick numbers here for you before we go off the air. E.J. Montgomery, of course, the high man. He had eight points in the first half. In the second half, he had 25. To go with 15 boards. So a 33-point night, 33 points and 15 rebounds. Uh, for E.J. Montgomery, and he should have had that many. His size, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Player scored for the Wheeler Wildcats. On the flip side for the Cedar Shoals Jaguars, 9, 12, 14 points for Demetrius Glenn, 10 points for Cavassier Bell. Giovanni McDavid, a, a positive showing, 2, 4, 6. He had 12. Jaden Williams, a young sophomore, had 3. Quincy Canty had 12. And uh, Cedric Rucker had two for the Jaguars. So the high man came off the bench, Demetrius Glenn. But the man of the night, and he should have been E.J. Montgomery, 33 points, 15 rebounds. The Wheeler Wildcats improved to 2-1. and one. The Cedar Show Jaguars fall to 1-1. One and one. Final thoughts, Sylvester? Hey, I loved it, man. I can't wait to come back tomorrow. But I like the way Wheeler played, man. They you know, they, 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 were just bigger, they were bigger than Cedar Shows. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with being bigger than Cedar Shows, but Cedar Shows showed me a lot. They showed me a lot come our 5A ball region play. Cedar Shows will be there one more time, the Final Four at least, for this Cedar Shows team. Yep, very good squad there. And, uh, nice showing, nice crowd, wonderful day again here at the Jared Cook Classic. want to thank the wonderful host and hospitality there. And don't forget, mark your calendars for the inaugural Atlanta Hawks Naismith Holiday Classic on December 21st, 22nd, and 23rd at Norcross High School. Visit hawksnaismithclassic.com for more information. And also, again, we'll be back right here for the final day of the Jarrett Cook Classic Tuesday. And also, we've got the championship games, two girls, two boys, in the Craig Sager Memorial Tournament. So SUV TV has got you all plugged away. And also, we want to thank Atlanta Tip-Off Club, Stat Row, CBA Sports, Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, and the Josh Mendoza Virtual Properties Realty. For our entire crew, he's Sylvester Williams. I'm Joel Hillsman. Once again, the final score of the night, Captain Wheeler Wildcats. They improved to 2-1 and one with a 76-58 victory over the Cedar Shoals Jaguars. We'll see you down the road next time right here on the SUVTV.com.